How old were you when you got Cheers? 34. So you struggled along and bounced around at auditions for a long time. Yeah. Did you eventually end up in New York? And I went from Carnegie thinking I'd go to regional theater because that's what they, you know, repertory companies, that's what they prepared you for is like a classical training. And no one got into any of the repertory companies that year in my class, so we all headed to New York. And I kicked around for about seven years. But I, I the first month or two I was there, I got uh, an understudy job in the greatest play you could probably have gotten it, for me, which was a Tom Stoppard two one acts oh, called yeah. After Magritte and The Real Inspector Hound. It was off Broadway, and I was an understudy. But then people started to leave or want months off. So I, I was performing every night, one of two or three different characters. So you were working pretty, pretty quickly, right, after you got yeah, there? Yeah, you know, $125 a week. Right. Take the, laundry, take the costumes home, and my then wife, Randy, and I would do the, wash all the costumes and bring them back, you know, on our day off. So we were multitasking for not a lot of money. But I would audition for commercials. I would audition to be an extra, anything to get in front of a camera. I didn't care if I was an extra or a, didn't matter. Did you ever get discouraged or lose belief that this was gonna be a thing? No, never. Never as a student and as a starting out. I never, but it wasn't lose faith that it was gonna happen because I, I didn't have a, it because it's gonna happen in mind. I wanted to succeed, and I, you know, like I, I couldn't get arrested in theater, and it would discourage me, and I'd be, oh no, there was discouragement about, you know, not getting hired or this or that, but it, I still had my acting class to go back to. I was, you know, I don't think I had a dark night of the soul when it came to acting, and I'm sure my self-esteem did this, but it never, it never did this to the point where. Maybe I need to find something else. Were you ever worried you're getting these commercials and maybe they're they're feeling, I don't know, like like beneath you? Did yeah, you ever no. worry like is is that that gritty, I don't know, yeah. Mean Streets, uh, New York actor thing going to no. elude me? No, you didn't ever have no, like. No, I mean I admire people who did, you know, totally admire the, the authentic New York actor, you know, who stuck to their guns and you know. Uh, totally admire it, but I've always had this, oh, if I take this, it's the end of my career? F you. I'm taking it. It's like, no, I will end my career, not you. I'll, you know, I, I do believe that, that if you, if you type, if you allow yourself to sit in a typecast moment, typecast is brilliant. It means something you did was successful enough that people go, oh, that's who that person is. So that's a good thing. Now, if you stay there and don't do anything else uh, or keep doing the same thing because it worked, that's on you. Hey, folks, thanks for watching. If you like what you just saw, then why not subscribe? Click right here for lots more off camera. And if you want to see the hour long version of these conversations, I'm going to give you the secret link. Here it is offcamera.com. Check it out.